For round one, a win for the mayor in the Menino versus Walmart fight. But it was no knockout, and both contenders are tough competitors. Expect a bell soon to signal round two. Southside residents lined up nearly two hours before this morning's opening. Chicago has one. Somerville may be next. And there is debate over whether this former bus lot in Dudley Square is a good spot for a Walmart neighborhood grocery. We can always use more stores, you know, for people to shop. I don't see them contributing to the community of Dudley Square. I think any jobs in Dudley are better than no jobs. They'll provide jobs, but at low wages. We should try to make uh, recognize progress when we see it. Darnell Williams, head of the Urban League in Boston, likes what this smaller, urbanized version of a Walmart would bring to his neighborhood. Fresh produce, low prices, and most importantly, jobs. I'm in favor of job creation, job development, economic uh, reciprocity, and building this community so that it can be uh, a destination point. But if Walmart is ever going to come to Boston, it will have to go through City Hall. And to this point, it's hit a major mayoral roadblock. Walmart went there. All those mom and pop stores have been there for years. Be gone after six, eight months. Tom Menino is concerned about Walmart's effect on local businesses and troubled by the company's track record on labor policies. You know, they're starting to come into urban areas because they've eaten up all the suburban locations throughout the country. I mean, it would be impactful for us, no question about it. A local Walmart might mean the end for tropical foods, says Ron Gary. His family has operated this grocery store for 35 years. And tropical foods has been here when a lot of people didn't want to be in Roxbury and when it wasn't the place to be. What's more, says Gary, his store, which specializes in the international tastes of his neighborhood, supports other local businesses. We spent $5 million last year in local purchases, and it's those jobs and that multiplier effect that really kind of separates a tropical foods from somebody like a Walmart. Well, we know that Walmart isn't going to be banking in this area. They're not going to put their money in Citizens Bank or Mount Washington Bank or Tremont Credit Union. It's going to go into a bank in Arkansas. City Councilor Tito Jackson also opposes the idea of Walmart in Dudley Square. He points out that with over $250 million of recent investment in Dudley, brighter days are just ahead, and he doesn't want to see this neighborhood sold short. We want to have thousands of jobs, but jobs where people can take care of themselves, take care of their family, have decent benefits, and have an opportunity to do better for themselves. This is about hating a company for purely political partisan reasons and leaving hurting people in the Roxbury community without work and uh, paying more money that they don't have for the things that they need. Michael Graham of 96.9 Boston Talks Radio sees hypocrisy in vilifying Walmart as an outsider when other national firms like Target are welcomed elsewhere in the city. And you've got these political plantation masters saying, no, I'm sorry, I've decided what job you ought to take, and you can't have that job. It's offensive, and it's destructive. I've got news for the modern American left. The era of the ye olde shoppy keeper growing his vegetables in the backyard, digging them up, and putting your money right there is over, okay? I love listening to people who have apartments full of IKEA furniture telling me I need to buy locally and keep the money here. Are you freaking idiots? Meanwhile, no one expects Walmart to walk away anytime soon. Least of all, Mayor Menino, who has paid close attention to Walmart's recent acts of goodwill towards neighborhood groups and nonprofits around the city. You know, they've given all those grants out around the city over the last year or so, and this year, $2 million alone so far this year. That's, you know, Boston's not for sale. So who gets those grants? Well, among the groups, the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts. Now, Darnell Williams says the Urban League gets grants from dozens of national retailers and that the league's support of Walmart is unrelated to any donations they have received. Fresh local produce all year round. An indoor farmer's market on its way to Boston's Hanover Street.
The first floor of the building is where the market will actually go. J.C. Monahan has the story when we return.